What's up guys, my name is Ace, and it looks like the AUG meta is here for Warzone. This is now considered to be one of the best, if not the best guns in Warzone at the moment. And today I'm going to be going through attachment by attachment like I do with this series, showing you guys exactly what each of these important attachments do to build the perfect AUG class setup. Before Season 2, the AUG was an okay gun, it wasn't all that great though. It definitely wasn't a top tier weapon, and the reason for this is it actually had SMG level bullet velocity. It had an extremely slow base bullet velocity, and therefore it just didn't compete at range with many of the other guns, including the M16. This bullet velocity has been patched now, and this is where we're going to have a look at our base stats. As you can see there, our base bullet velocity is now 640 meters per second, whereas pre-patch it was around 350 meters per second. So this was a massive difference to that bullet velocity. And then having a look at our other base stats, our damage to the body is 40, which is fairly high per bullet, especially considering the fact that that can hit you anywhere in the body, you don't have to hit that upper torso multiplier or anything. It deals the same damage to the toe as it does to the upper torso. After that, our rate of fire within the burst isn't quite as fast as the M16, however we do get a noticeably better burst delay, so you can get subsequent bursts out faster than you can with an M16, which is one of the big benefits to using the AUG, because it is going to take you multiple bursts to kill an armored enemy. Now our base time to kill, assuming the enemy has no armor, is really really fast at just 140 milliseconds. However, you might notice that our time to kill with three armor plates, this isn't a very good time to kill. There are plenty of guns out there that technically kill faster against three armor plates, However, this is where our headshot damage comes in, and naturally when firing with the AUG, you tend to hit headshots just because of the way the burst works. If you shoot them in the torso, usually the recoil will take you up, so at least one of your bullets will hit them in the head within that burst. And since we deal 72 damage to the head with this gun per bullet, which is a lot, and what this means is you're often going to be killing people very quickly with this, much faster than this stated time to kill. Now it's also worth noting, just like with the M16, one of the great benefits of this gun is it doesn't have a range drop-off, or at least I haven't been able to find the range drop-off with this. So we deal that flat amount of damage no matter what the range is, which is amazing. As for our aim down sight time, it's a little bit on the slow side compared to like an assault rifle for instance, at 400 milliseconds. However, our sprint out time is more like an SMG, it's almost instant at just 133 milliseconds. So you can be very aggressive with this gun, and you get that really really quick sprint out time. Now you can also see our base recoil, that's without any attachments at 14 meters. It's got a very nice tight spread when it comes to the recoil within each burst. There is a bit of horizontal recoil though, like when you compare this to the M16, the M16 tends to have less horizontal recoil here. But we can make up for that with attachments, so let's start diving into the individual attachments. The first category here is the muzzle attachment, and this one is a no-brainer. Now that the agency suppressor is fixed, and it's once again boosting our bullet velocity, which by the way, with the AUG, we get a 20% boost to our bullet velocity with the agency suppressor, I highly recommend using this attachment. Like I said, this one's just a no-brainer. We don't even need to look at the other ones, because this one is just so important. As for the barrel category though, this is where things get a little bit interesting, because the stated stats for the barrel on the AUG in particular are still not 100% accurate. They did fix most of the Cold War attachments with the Season 2 update, so most of them are accurate, but not when it comes to the barrels for the AUG. Essentially, the first stat we want to look at is bullet velocity, because this is going to be extremely important with this, and the only barrel that states that it increases your bullet velocity is the Cavalry Lancer, which gives us a 40% boost to our velocity. However, it turns out there's actually another barrel that boosts our bullet velocity, even though it's not stated, and this is the Strike Team Barrel. And with this one, we actually get a better boost than we get with the Cavalry Lancer at 50%. And on top of this, the Strike Team Barrel gives us a faster fire rate. Not only do we get a slightly faster fire rate within the burst, we also get a shorter burst delay, and therefore we can get those follow-up bursts faster, and we can kill people faster. And as a result, since we definitely want to be boosting that velocity, and these are the only two that do that, it looks like the pretty clear choice here is the Strike Team Barrel. Although, keep in mind, if you increase your fire rate, you're also technically increasing your recoil a bit. But I'm going to do a comparison toward the end of the video, so you can see when we've got these stacked with attachments, I actually compared these two barrels just to see if there was a significant difference in recoil. And I'll show you guys the results of that once we get toward the end. Now, skipping over the lasers for now, the next really important attachment I want to look at is the optic attachment. And the reason it's important on the AUG is the standard optic that you get if you don't use an optical attachment, you actually get like a built-in optic. 
This one has scope glint, so if you aim at enemy players, they can see that really bright scope glint as if you had a sniper rifle, and this can put you at a pretty big disadvantage. So therefore, I wouldn't recommend running the base optic. I definitely encourage you to use one of the optics. For me, I really like the 3x optic. However, this is an area that does come down to preference to some extent. You might want to go with a 4x, for instance, or maybe even something a little more close quarters like a millstop or a cobra red dot, for instance. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to go with the 3x here because that's the one I just feel most comfortable with. But with that, let's move on to one of the most important attachment sections that you can use on this gun, and this is going to be the underbarrel grips. And the reason for this is, like I said, we have that little bit of horizontal recoil in the burst, and we want to tighten that up the best that we can so that this gun can stretch out and be effective at longer ranges. So an underbarrel grip is an absolute must-have on this gun, and the primary thing that we're looking for here is recoil control. So that's the first thing we'll have a look at, and let's just compare all of the different grips to see what they do to our recoil. And as you can see here, the clear winner is no surprise, it's actually the field agent grip. This one does have the tightest and most consistent grouping, even though you might see a couple bullets that go a little bit off of the first grouping on the left for the field agent grip. That's just a couple bullets, that's not something you really need to worry about so much. The rest of those groupings are really, really tight together, and therefore this is the best bet when it comes to recoil. But it's worth noting the infiltrator appears to help with our recoil, especially that horizontal recoil, even though that's not stated anywhere in its description. So that is actually also a viable option in my opinion. But for me, I am going to stick with the field agent because I want to make sure I get the best possible accuracy with this gun. And this just leaves us with one extra attachment slot on the AUG, and for this one, I strongly feel that this depends on the mode that you're playing. If you're playing solos, for instance, I don't feel like an ammunition attachment like a larger magazine, for instance, is necessary at all. Because you get 10 bursts within a default magazine, and you should be able to put a single player down within 10 bursts most of the time. So with that in mind, one of the best attachments that you can put on this for winning gunfights, especially in relatively close quarter situations, is the SAS Combat Stock. And the reason for this is it gives us a 50% boost to our aim down sight strafe speed, so that means we can be strafing back and forth in gunfights really, really quickly, and this makes you a noticeably harder target to hit. I find when I use this stock, I'm often just dodging bullets like crazy. And this one does give you the biggest boost to our aim down sight stray speed. It's worth noting the Raider stock only gives us a 38% boost, which, I mean, is still a great boost. It's just not quite as good as 50%. So yeah, for solo game modes, instead of using a magazine attachment, I would go with the SAS combat stock. However, if I am playing a squad-based mode, I do like having a larger magazine capacity, because usually I'm dealing with not only one enemy with full armor plates, I've got multiple enemies with full armor plates, and I don't want to have to reload in the middle of a fight. So I broke down all of the different magazines that you can use here, and it turns out some of them really significantly hurt your aim down sight time, and you want to avoid them. This includes the final unlock, the Salvo 54 round fast mag. This is often the choice that people will just automatically go to, because it's the biggest magazine capacity, and you get a faster reload, that sounds great. But this slows our aim down sight time down by 200 milliseconds, which is a very long time in Call of Duty terms, so I would say stay far away from this particular one. In fact, out of all of these, the one I actually like the most is just the standard 45 round magazine. And the reason for this is it doesn't change our aim down sight time at all, at least not at 60 FPS, there's no measurable difference. Even if you're playing at a higher frame rate, you're not going to notice any difference here. And even though we just get the same reload time as our standard reload, this is a very reasonable reload time at 2.12 seconds. And therefore, that's why this is actually my preferred choice for magazine attachments on the AUG. So that's it, that's my best AUG class setup currently in Warzone. And let's just go back and revisit what I was talking about with the barrels. Let's compare that strike team barrel, which gives us that rate of fire boost, to the cavalry barrel, which doesn't give us the rate of fire boost. And yet the strike team gives us that better boost to the velocity. As you can see here, there's really no significant difference, if any at all here. And this is why you're much better off going with the strike team barrel compared to the cavalry lancer, because it quite simply has more benefits to it. So at the end of the day with this class setup, we've got an amazing bullet velocity of around 1100 meters per second, which is extremely fast, and this means out to about 80 meters, you don't even need to lead your target, which is crazy. And on top of this, it turns out with that 3x optic, we actually get a faster aim down sight time than our base aim down sight time at 350 milliseconds, which is really nice to see, especially once we have all of these other attachments combined here as well. So if you guys haven't given this one a shot yet, make sure you do. It's starting to take over Warzone, and for good reason. This thing is very, very powerful. 
Now, of course, as always, I'm interested in hearing from you guys in the comment section below. What do you guys think about the AUG in its current state in Warzone? Do you think this gun is super powerful and like absolutely a top tier gun, like one of the best in the game? Or at this point, do you think it's just overrated? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.